Hey guys, welcome back to the show. Today's video is going to be about the Zeiss Distagon 35 F1.4 ZM. Uh, and this video is sponsored by Skillshare, but more about that later. So I've been a Leica user for probably eight to nine years. And I never thought I would get into Leica, and I honestly was a medium format shooter back then, but then I was a dad. And when you have children, uh, you either buy an AF uh, camera with autofocus and you run around chasing them, or you can have a camera that you can use without having to think too much, which in this case would be a Leica. In that time, I got a, Sumi, uh, a Color Scope R50, then I went to a 35, and after that I got into the Sumicron life. This is the Sumicron V1 that I have here on the table on my trusty M2 that needs a oh, uh, CLA, you'll notice that in the B-roll. But basically, I love this. I'm uh, someone that shoots mostly HP5 push the 1600, uh, because where I used to live in Spain, it was always cloudy, think of London, and uh, you could not shoot 400 or 200 ISO speed film most of the time because I shoot indoors and outdoors. And this is the camera I've documented my family with. So it's not a street photography camera for me. It's not, uh, you know, anything like that. I only shoot my family when we're going out and about. That's how I do it. I document my family. I don't know how you would say that. Maybe Matt Day has the, uh, what is it, document your life. Uh, so that's what I've been doing with this camera. So in this case, I've always liked the 35 F2 Summicron for the size and for the F2. I usually never open to F2. But of course, as a camera geek and a camera aficionado, uh, I do love uh, other gear. So now that I'm working at camera store, I had this lens in the store and I was like, damn, that Distagon has always called my name. And I wanted to try it out. So basically I took it out for a spin during summer and uh, we just hit uh, fall, so not now, uh, during the summer there was light. And I picked this lens up and I've been shooting it, I shot two rolls. And first things I wanna make sure, this is a review, but it's my review. So you can take that with a pinch of salt. There, I don't think there's any objective review. This is a totally subjective review. I wanted to make a video on this lens and show you my results and my impressions and why I think it's interesting or not. Uh, it's around a 1500 uh, euro or dollar lens and it's big, okay? Zeiss makes amazing glass. It makes amazing glass for video, for photo, for all these kinds of things, and it's amazing. And this is a 35.14, and I'm gonna mount it on my M2 that's here. I'm gonna take this V1 Summicron off and mount this uh, Zeiss. So I'm gonna start with what I did, and let's see if we can figure that out. This is one I can't remember how to put on a lens, because I haven't put that lens in a while. So. I decided to do the review with color film, which I never shoot color film through my Leica. Then I decided to go for ahead and try to shoot at my, out of my comfort zone, which is uh, instead of stop down to f16, 1, 1000, which is what I usually shoot when it's sunny, I would be shooting at uh, f1.4, well, f2, maybe 2.8 at the most um, to see that separation, that Zeiss look and uh, bokeh and so on. So I got some Portra 160, and I shot it out through the lake uh, summers here in Finland. To be 100% honest, this lens is amazing. The results are stunning. Yes, at 1.4, it's really hard to nail focus. It's a rangefinder camera, but and, you know, it just is not easy. But when you do focus, it's amazing. It looks beautiful, the color rendition, the everything. I did scan these myself and the colors are not all perfect because I used MPS, MPS, uh, you know, Negative Lab Pro, MPL. And uh, I always struggle sometimes with some colors and I'm not the best at color editing. That's why I shoot black and white most of the time. So I shot this lens and it's great. Then the thing that I will do is I will remark why I like it and why I don't like it, okay? But not before I give you the message from Skillshare. So Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for creators. Explore new skills, deepen existing passions, and get lost in creativity. There's a bunch of topics there like photography, darkroom film photography, uh, and there's design, there's video editing, there's YouTube creating, like all kinds of topics that you can learn from, which is amazing. I, for example, have taken the class with MKBHD about video creating because that is basically what I do day in and day out now at my current job. So MKBHD, uh, how he does a video from start to finish on YouTube. Also Dan Rubin's video on phone photography because I basically also take a lot of work 
on my phone for, you know, pictures on my phone for work. So yeah, Skillshare has really helped me with those classes, learning new skills. It's great because it's curated specifically for learning, meaning there's no ads and there's always launching new premium classes. So you can stay focused and follow wherever your creativity takes you. The first 1,000 people to use this link will get one month free trial of Skillshare. So yeah, thanks for Skillshare for sponsoring the video. So like I said, I'm gonna mention the pros and the cons of this lens. First big uh, con is size. It's bulky, it's big. There's one thing I really don't like about a lens for Leica is that it will make the camera like top, down, top heavy, front heavy, which means that when you're carrying it on your neck, it'll keep on wanting to fall forwards. That's uncomfortable to carry, it's uncomfortable to hold, and uncomfortable to even put on a table most times. So that is not very nice. That's why I usually tend to go to smaller glass. But yes, it's a 1.4 lens, it's bulky. Second problem, it's really long. Uh, Leica makes 35 lenses. There's the older versions that are like made in uh, Germany and um, Canada, which are really small. They're like as small as my 35 V1. And it is amazing that now they're so bulky. This is so long, it's kind of uncomfortable. And I'm not using a lens hood, so add on to that. Then there's also the fact that the focus throw is nice, but to me it feels a little too hard. And I know this is how it's supposed to be, don't get me wrong, I work right now at a camera store, and this is how it should feel, but it's kind of uncomfortable. Plus, it doesn't have a focus tab, it has like a, like a focus like nipple, if I can say that on YouTube, uh, that basically is uncomfortable. It's not really super comfortable to focus. Then yes, it has the depth of, uh, depth of field scale uh, for hyper uh, hyperfocal, and also it has apertures in third of stops. So you can go from 1.4 to the next stop, to the next stop, then F2, 1, 2, F2.8. That is extremely annoying. Yes, I get it. People like having more control. I like having less control. I like bold numbers. I like big numbers. I like one click as F2, next click as F2.8. I don't like the middle click, I don't like thirds of clicks because I count my clicks when I'm shooting. I don't have to look at the lens, I know my lenses. Yes, of course, if I use this lens for a very long time, I wouldn't have to be looking at the lens. I'd be like, oh yeah, f1.4, 1, 2, 3, 2, 1. You know, 3, f2.8. But that is extremely annoying if you're out there shooting with your family and trying to enjoy your day. Plus, my light meters don't even have like middle settings for this. Like my light meter, I use the Reveni light meter for this, it's like f4, to f5.6, to f8, it's like three stops. It's annoying, it really is annoying. I understand why they made it, I find it annoying for my use, like I said. So those are pretty much the cons, also the price, of course, it's not a cheap lens. But the price is, I think, fair for the quality and you know, being German, uh, German brand, I don't know if they're German made anymore. Cosina, I think, is made in Japan nowadays. Or say Zeiss, um, but who knows. So basically that's what I don't really like about this lens. Now I'll tell you what I do like. I like the results. That's about all there is that I like. I like the results and the rest are, to me are cons. That's why I will not pick this lens up. I was thinking of changing one of my Sumicrons for this Sumi looks by, made by Zeiss, but I won't. I really like the results, but I never shoot wide open. I never shoot low ISOs. And this lens only goes to f16, which most of mine do, but I do like the f22 when I can. And for that reason, like a 35, I'd rather have a 35 a Sumeron that's a 2.8 and then goes to like f22 than have a 1.4. For me, 1.4 to f2.8 pretty much are useless in my normal day-to-day -day photography. So why would I pay so much for a lens that doesn't do, uh, you know, covers things that I don't need? I wanted to test it out, believe me. I went in with like an open mentality, but honestly, for my use, no, not for me. But yeah, I'll leave the results. Uh, there's one portrait in particular that I really, really like of my daughter Sophia, which I nailed focus. I did uh, spray and pray a little bit because two rolls in one day for me in color uh, is usually a lot. But I really wanted to see how it performed. Uh, the color rendition, the bokeh, the sharpness is amazing. If that's what you're looking for, this is a great lens to pick up. But for someone that likes carrying a camera almost daily, uh, to go out for walks, to be running out around lakes, jumping on rocks and stuff, this is uh, too much, too much, too much lens, too heavy, uh, but beautiful. <laughs> so that, take it that as, a, as my review of the lens. But yeah, 
I really thought it was fun. I thought it was fun to use. Uh, I recommend somebody picking up to try it out. Of course, if you can pick it up without having to pay it, maybe someone has it and can loan it to you, but it's amazing. And if you are shooting probably uh, you know, low ISOs or a digital uh, M camera, this is probably beautiful. Probably on an M10 at 1.4 and one point, an F2, it's beautiful. But for film, if you're not into shooting low ISOs, it's just going to be uh, annoying. And at f1.4, if you're in a dark area so you can shoot, uh, you're going to be limited to uh, you know, your focus abilities. Also, I'd like to mention the fact that f1.4 on a Leica M body, a film body, the max speed is 1 1,000. So it's hard. That's why I picked ISO 160 Portra. If you were shooting Portra 400, you basically will have to rate your film like at 200 to see if you can shoot wide open. Okay, so take that into consideration. But yeah, that's my little review of the Zeiss uh, Distagon uh, 35mm ZM f1.4, which is a mouthful of words to name this lens. It's uh, available where I work, but it's not sponsored anyway. But like, yeah, it's a great lens. I didn't know it would be available for very long, so I did the video. Uh, as soon as I could, but it's taking me a little time to finish it. But yeah, I will uh, be leaving this back in the box uh, where it came from, but I highly recommend it, like I said, to the people that think this is important to have a 35 f1.4 that's sharp at 1.4, has good contrast, and so on. But yeah, no technical review, not, you know, I'm not into that. And sorry that all the pictures are in my family, that's what I shoot day in and day out. So yeah, thanks to Skillshare for sponsoring. Remember the first thousand people uh, to hit the link below, we'll have that uh, trial. So yeah, thanks for watching guys and see you in the next one. Bye.